You can do this by PayPal or Zelle, just by going to kgmparaland at gmail.com, or by Cash App, you can go to dollar sign Kingdom of Grace, or by mail at 3422 Swenson Road, Suite 104, Paraland, Texas, 77581. And again, thank you for your support. and fitness at Tom Bass Park, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Always remember that prayer changes things. Call into Morning Glory every Saturday at 6 a.m. Dial in at 425-535-9580. May your prayers be answered in Jesus' name. food items to our local ministries, Christian Helping Hands and Alvin South Coast Ministries of Brazoria County. If you would like to donate, please bring non-perishable items. still a what? Because God is what? All. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let us bow our heads for prayer, please. Father, we thank you for today. God, we honor you, Lord God, not just with our heart, but with our soul. We honor you, Lord God, with our mouth. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. You are a good, good father. That's who you are. Hallelujah. And we are loved by you. Hallelujah. Father, we want to say thank you, Lord. Nobody else loves us. Hallelujah. You show sure enough do. And we want to say thank you. Lord God, we bless your name. This is the day you had made. A day for us to rejoice. A day for us to be glad in it. A day for us to move forward in you. A day for us to mature in you. A day for us to get more wisdom. A day for our faith to be increased in you. A day for us to love you more. A day for us, Lord God, to seek you more. A day for us, Lord God, to run after you, Lord God. A day for us, for our passion, Lord God, to be for you. A day for us, Lord God, to make sure that our heart, Lord God, is being purified daily by the blood of Jesus. It's a good day, hallelujah, because you made this day, hallelujah. We are standing, we are living, hallelujah. We are among the living, hallelujah. We have life and we have it abundantly, hallelujah. Lord God, we want to say thank you and we want to bless your name. 
So, Father, we ask for those that are not here today that you would bless them and be with them. Those that are watching, Lord God in heaven, we ask that you would bless them and be with them. And, Lord God in heaven, we truly, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we invite your Holy Spirit here. We invite your anointing here. Lord God, we invite your favor here. Lord God in heaven, when we call out to you and ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, cleanse us of our sin, whatever that sin may be or those sins may be. Deliver us from us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, and help us to live and to love walking up right before you. God, we thank you, and we bless you, Father, and we praise your name, Father God. May your will be done this day, Lord God, for such a such a time as this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give God glory. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful. You may be seated. I am so thankful. I see more men here. I thank God. I see a young man over here with all of his children. I'm giving God glory. I saw when in praise and worship his children, his daughters, and his son, they were doing this little dance, which I don't know how to do. They were clapping their hands, but they were praising the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing. He's a young man with all of his children, and he brings them to church every Sunday. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I give God glory. It's a wonderful thing. Now this is a time for offering those of you that won't have to pay your tithes and pay your offering, or if you just want to plant a seed and, and watch God move, and whatever you give, even if you give pay your, when you pay your offering, you must have an expectant hope because you are being obedient to the word of God. I'm going to ask the ushers to please come up. If you need an envelope, raise your hand, please. The ushers will bring one to you. Thank you, Jesus. Those of you that are online, you pay, that are watching us now, you pay online. And we just want to say thank you for your support. We need your support as a church. And I do have to say there is no one here that gets a salary from Kingdom of Grace Ministries. No one here. The money that's being used, we have rent to pay. We have utilities to pay. We have insurance to pay. We have a lot of responsibilities. And, uh, by you paying your tithes and your offering and being faithful and paying that and being faithful and being obedient to God, you are allowing us to be able to take care of the business of the church. And we want to say thank you. You may come up with the basket, please. Thank you. Precious Savior and righteous God, we thank you for this offering, Lord God. We thank you for everyone that have given, Lord God, in heaven, in sincerity, Father in heaven. We thank you and we ask you, Lord God, that every penny, every cent, every dollar will be used for your glory, will be put in the right area that it needs to be, Lord God, in heaven, and that your approval will be upon everything that is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I do have some announcements. I do want to say welcome to the Kingdom of Grace Ministries. Welcome to the Kingdom of Grace Ministries, everybody. Uh, we are celebrating Black History Month this month. And with us celebrating Black History, we do want to honor and recognize all our black business owners. And um, Alvin Jamal is going to put something uh, up on the screen and um, by that, we will be acknowledging our black business owners. We will be doing this every Sunday this month. So, Alvin.
Did you know that 40% of women suffer from hair problems by the age of 40? If you were one of them, you were in the right place. Hi, I'm Quar Becca Cannels, also known as Q-Style. I have been a licensed hairstylist since 1996 and the owner of Q-Style Beauty Essentials, where we have over 26 hair care products. I am the author of Replenish Your Hair Health and Happiness, and I am here to help you achieve yours. This book is not only a memoir, but also a guide for living a balanced and fulfilling life. You'll learn how to take care of your hair, whether it's natural, straight, or curly, with simple and effective remedies. I am also a health and wellness coach, so inside my book you'll also discover how to slim down and stay healthy with delicious protein shakes. Not only did I do it myself, but I have had the opportunity of helping others get healthy, slim down, and feel better than they have in ears. So, if you are ready to transform your hair and your life, you can get your copy of Replenish Your Hair, Health, and Happiness on Amazon or visit her website to learn more about her and her book. Link in bio. Hi, it's me, Tiffany. I am happy to announce I will be launching Twala Beauty late 2024 this year. Twala Beauty is a 24-hour mobile beauty supply store that will be servicing Houston and the surrounding areas. I wanted to concentrate on rebranding and relaunching the Twala Enterprise. My main focus is to provide Black-owned beauty products and help support local businesses grow. I received a revelation from God through a dream, as well as family members confirming to me this is definitely a starting point to succeed and assist in elevating our community. I am so excited about this new journey and I cannot wait to announce the grand opening this year. If you would like to collaborate, please contact me at twalabeautysupplies at gmail.com or call 346-803-0614. God bless. of our business owners a hand. We have Sister Quebecca Canales who's here and we also have my beautiful young daughter Tiffany Proctor. Praise the Lord. We will have more business owners, black business owners that we're going to acknowledge on next week. Uh, before Pastor come up, I do want to thank Brother Muhammad. He came in this morning and after services he did provide all the children with donuts. Thank you for after the services all the children with donuts, and all the adults with kolaches. And that's, he, that's from Brother Muhammad. Thank you. Pastor Proctor. Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Without further ado, we, uh, today, instead of me bringing the word of God, I wanted to uh, introduce to you all one of our mothers in the church and someone that uh, we love dearly. Uh, we're going to be going out of town tonight. So I said, you know what? Instead of me coming to bring the message, I wanted her to deliver a word from God for us. So I want you all to join. Let us all stand and receive Sister Daisy Hubbard as she brings us the word of God this morning. God bless you. Come on now. Tonight. God bless you. I told her, don't worry about this camera being up here. Just let the Lord lead her as you normally would do. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. I give God the glory this morning. Amen. When I was asked to do this, I was like, what am I going to say? Immediately the Lord gave me the subject because this sermon is for myself. Amen. So you, if you know me, you know I'm a person that I'm going to say what God has given me and then I'm going to let you go. <laughs> so, I, so we're going to bow our heads and we're going to pray. Father God, we come to you this morning, oh God. We give you glory this morning. We thank you for another day, oh God. We thank you for coming into your house. Father God, as we, I come before your people today, Father God, I pray, oh God, that you would give them not the words that I have to say, but the words that you have to say, oh Lord God. God, that you would encourage their hearts today, oh God. God, that you would let them know, God, that they are not forgotten, God. That you know their names, oh God, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. And when they leave this place today, Lord God, they will know that they have been in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Today, if you have your Bibles, if you will turn to Isaiah, the 40th chapter, beginning with the 28th verse. Isaiah 40th chapter, beginning with the 28th verse. Will you have it? Let me know, please. Amen. And it reads, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He gives his power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Amen. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord Amen. shall renew their strength. Amen. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Amen. They shall run and not be weary. Amen. They shall walk and not faint. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. And for a subject today, I'm going to use renewed strength. And if I had a subtopic, it would be Lord, renew my strength today. Amen. So, as I was thinking, everybody's going through something. And when you were born into this world, you begin your journey. So even the little, the little baby, the youngest person in here, you have begun a journey. And on that journey, God knew that we needed strength. If he said that if he had not known it, he would not have given us the word of God and encouraged us to renew our strength. He's given us strength, but we have to renew that strength. I was, I was looking up in the Bible, and it says that the, the word strength is used over 360 times in the Bible. So as we go forth, sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we need strength. If you were in your car, every day when you get in your car, you can't use that same gas you got to, sooner or later, that gas is going to run out. Amen. And you got to stop at the service station, and you're going to have to get some gas. Because if you don't, you're going to find yourself on the side of the road. You're going to find yourself in a situation. So it, with our strength, our strength needs to be renewed. Amen. I don't know about you, but sometimes, yes, I have strength. But sometimes I need God to renew that strength. Yeah. Sometimes I get weary along the way. Sometimes I get weighted down along the way. Sometimes I find myself in a Red Sea situation. Sometimes I find myself in a lion's den situation. Sometimes I find myself in a fiery situation, fiery furnace situation. So I have to say, Lord, renew my strength. Yeah. And so we have to understand that he said that he, God said, I will renew your strength. Sometimes I think when we get in trouble, it's we try to do it ourselves. We have to do it in our, own, in our strength and not in the strength of the Lord. We have to know that the word of God is our strength. And in our strength, he will give us a map. He will also give us a, a, a four, he always give us a, a, a print, a, foot, to, to, a footprint, you know, to just walk in his and not in our own. A lot of times we get sidetracked because we want to do things our own way. And we don't take our time to seek the word of God, to seek the Bible. I don't care what everybody say. I don't care what they're doing. But if God's word says do it away, you have to do it that way. If, you're, if you are baking a cake and you're trying to get to bake a certain kind of cake, there are some ingredients you cannot substitute and you cannot leave it out because it's not going to turn out right. The same thing with the, the, with the word of God. As we, go, as we walk through our journey of life, there are some things that you cannot leave out. Amen. I don't care what everybody else is saying. I don't care how they got there. I don't care how they attained uh, uh, whatever they have attained to. There are some things that you just simply cannot get by unless you follow the blueprint that God has given us. Amen. So I, I, I just think about the Red Sea. Sometimes I find, when I said I find myself, uh, we find ourselves in a Red Sea situation. Sometimes things can get so difficult. And every time, I, this is what I say. I say, Lord, I'm in a Red Sea situation. Pharaoh is on my back. The Red Sea is in front of me. According to the natural, they're going to say, you're going to die. But according to the spiritual, God will roll back the sea for you and allow you to cross over. And God would do that in our lives. Even in the, in the, when, when Daniel was in the lion's den. Oh, according to the natural, you're in a, you're in a lion's den. You, 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 you somebody's fool. You the, the lion's fool. You dead. You ate up. But according to God, 
when they opened up the, the, the den, Daniel was still there. You have to know that God, you have to know that I can tell you, everybody can tell you, but you got to know that God is a deliverer. Yes, amen. You, and this is, and I, I hear people say, God is talking, you're not listening. God is talking, we are listening, we are hearing, but we are not following the instructions. Amen. That's the problem. So we have to follow the instruction. God has given us everything. He's given us the strength. He's renewing our strength. And sometimes there are things that we are going through right now, us sitting in here. There are personal things you've gone through that you may have never told anybody. There are things that you are dealing with. You may have come to church with a, a situation that you're dealing with and you're trying to work it out and you don't know where to begin. But God knows that. So today... I want you to say, Lord, I need you to renew my strength. Amen. Because God will deliver you and he will lift that heavy weight from you. Because sometimes you're trying to carry it in your own strength. And not only are we trying to carry our stuff in our own strength, we're trying to carry somebody else's stuff Amen. in our own strength. So God wants us to know, I will strengthen you. But there are some things that you have to do. Amen. You have to surrender some things to me. Because you can't just carry everything. There are some things that we have to lay aside. There are some things that we have to let go. There are some things that we have to pick up and we have to carry. But there's never going to be anything that's too hard for us to carry that God is not going to give us the strength to carry. But we have to understand that there are some things that we have to seek him on. There are some decisions that we have to ask God, God, is this what you want me to do? Everyone in here... We have a purpose. We have a journey to, to make on this earth. And your journey is not my journey. My journey is not your journey. So you can't take what I need for my journey on your journey. Amen. Because God may be sending you a whole different way. Because he has a whole different purpose for you. And sometimes we try to inter we interrupt others' journeys. Because as a mother... And your children, you don't want to see them go through certain things because maybe you have gone on a journey. Maybe your journey has been similar. And you're saying, don't go down that road. There are some ditches. There are some, some ruts in that road. And, and you're trying to tell them, but they have to go down that road in order for them to understand because that's their journey. And, that, and the thing is, but this is the thing. We may go down some roads. We may find ourselves even in a rut. But God doesn't want us to stay in that rut. If you stay in the rut too long, it's going to turn to a grave. And we don't want to stay in a rut too long for it to turn to a grave. And then we're going to be in a dead place. But let me let you know something. Even in a dead place, God can resurrect you. Even in a dead place, God can renew your strength. Even in a dead place, God can use you. So we have to understand that there are, there are journeys that we have, but God will give us the strength to make that journey. I remember we used to sing a song that say, step by step, we'll make this journey, even though our way may seem hard, but we're going to make the journey. So today, I have given you what God has given me. Amen. And I want you to understand, today as you leave this place, I want you to say this to me, with me, right now. Lord, Lord help, me, help me. Give me strength, give me strength for, my for my journey. And, and with that being said, I'm giving you back to Pastor Proctor. Amen. Wonderful word. I bless you. I bless you. Amen. Thank you, sugar. Yeah. What a word. So, uh, what a word. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, I don't. Y'all can't get used to that. She just, that was too <laughs> too precise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Daisy. I, Mother, you uh, thank God. What a word. What a word.
Amen. Amen. God's strength. Hold on. You can't do it by yourself. Um, don't let your rut turn into a grave. That was powerful. That's powerful. You be in a rut too long, they'll start throwing dirt over you. Ah, that was powerful. Amen. Now is the time we want to celebrate and to always remember communion. And so we're going to have our communion service right now. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, Sister Daisy, be prepared. <laughs> be prepared for the next time. Get ready for the next time. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible is very clear about communion, or what we call the Lord's Supper. And so if you're by uh, way of broadcast and you uh, here with us, you know this is the first Sunday of the month. And so we want you to be here with us and participate with us here in this um, uh, communion service. So I uh, hope that you prepared yourself, you're ready for us. So we're just giving a few minutes before I uh, commence with this service. Give you time who are at home to prepare yourselves and, and to join us as well. Thank God for that wonderful word. Uh, this is Black History. And you know what? I thank God for the uh, acknowledgement of black history. Um, it's amazing how so many people tried to rewrite the history books, only to find out that uh, it's a lot of things that uh, African Americans, black Americans have been involved in, and, um, uh, and it's all coming out. And it's coming out in such a way that you can't deny our contributions, right? Uh, I'm going to give you an example. You know, uh, many slaves have built the uh, White House. They built it. But you know it's been standing for eons of time. Hello, somebody. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was black slaves, that owners, that built the White House. And guess what? It's still standing. It's still standing. So we thank God for the things that they don't want to say, but they have to acknowledge because there's monuments all over the place to acknowledge and what God has done and what God is doing for us, amen. Uh, I'm turning to uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, uh, 23rd verse, it's a familiar passage. It says, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night when he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, is, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. There is no covenant if Jesus would not have died on that cross. Jesus died on the cross. He was in the grave for we know three days. And after that, he rose again. And it wasn't just a story that they saw him at the grave. The Bible said he was seen by over 500 or so people. And the Bible said, and during that 500, uh, the 500 people who saw him, over 40 days, Jesus committed and done so many wonderful miracles that it was too, num num too numerous to name them all. So there's a great cloud of witnesses that saw Jesus after the resurrection. So as often as you do this, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Because why that's important? It is at the cross that Jesus down on that cross that through his righteousness got us back to the original state of worshiping God with our talents, with the gift that God has gave us so we can be able to glorify him and our hallelujah belongs to God, which is a hallelujah from us. Amen. Not through bulls, not through goats, 
not through killing anything. There was one resurrection, and he was Jesus Christ. So we thank God for Jesus. Amen. And Jesus is not only the author and the finisher of our faith, the Bible said that we are joint heirs with him. Not only he's our savior, right? The Bible said he will be our savior, our king, king of kings and lord of lords. He also said the church itself would be married to him. So therefore you would be married or endowed to Jesus. So you would be a joint heir through marriage, a joint heir by calling you brothers and sisters. And also by him being the king. So we can't lose. Amen. Thank God for Jesus for making us join heirs with him to celebrate with him in the times to come. So this ain't it. This ain't the end. No matter what your journey is, is what Sister Davis is say, uh, Sister Daisy said, no matter what you're going through, we're all going through something. But remember one thing, strengthen yourself in the Lord. God bless you. Let everybody stand. Let the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost rest rule and abide now and forever, evermore. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, as we leave this place, we pray that you go with us and be with us, Lord. Help us to enjoy this day as a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and forever be glad in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I say unto one, I say unto all, fight, watch, and pray. God bless y'all, and y'all have a wonderful day. Bye now.